Hello everybody, so what we're going to try and do now is to do a short little video on the house block that I made previously. Lucy was asking for the dimensions of the pieces. And then Willem and myself decided to make yet another one to, And we will just film the making of it. So then it will give us another one that is finished for our 35 count that we need. So the very first piece of fabric, we are first going to do the fabrics for the sky. This is the first piece of fabric. It is a 10 and a half inch by one and a half inch for the sky that we need. Secondly, you're going to cut two pieces of two and a half by two and a half. And you're going to draw a line on the back of one of them because this is going to be a covered corner on the on the at the roof. The other one we're going to use as is, so that is a two and a half by two and a half, two of those. Then we're going to need three pieces of two and a half by two and a half. One, one. two, three of those. Then we're going to need two pieces of three and a half by one and a half. And those are all the sky pieces. For your block that you're going to need. We carry on with the pieces of the block. Now we're going on to the roof pieces. We are, we're going to need three of those. The first one is a piece of six and a half by two and a half and then two pieces of two and a half by two and a half. This is by the front door where the where the capsicum or something whatever you call that thing is and this is the side of the roof. So one piece of six and a half by two and a half, and then these two, that's the same fabric, of two and a half each. Now we're going to carry on with the chimneys. There's two on this house. We've decided while the roof is grey, we're going to make two grey chimneys as well. It's two pieces of one and a half by one and a half. I'll take those away, and we're carrying on. The door, we need one piece of fabric, three and a half by two and a half. Then for the window, we need one piece of fabric, two and a half by two and a half. And then I don't know what this is. Let's take that away. It's a two and a half by two by and a half window. And and half. You can do like we did for our first block. Insert a piece of lace curtain in here with that's open from the bottom. It's just stitched into the three sides. And then it looks as if your window has got a lace curtain hanging in, in front of it. Um, so, so we've got the door and we've got the window and now we get to the, the walls. We need four pieces of four and a half by one and a half for the four walls. Then together with that, we're also going to need three pieces of two and a half by one and a half. So for the walls, four pieces of four and a half by one and a half. And three pieces of two and a half by one and a half. We carry on. We're going to the sides of the house. Or what Willem calls the side gardens. So it's, it's next to the walls of the house on the sides. Two pieces of four and a half by one and a half. And for the front garden. Now this, on our previous block, we've made it in two pieces. In two long pieces. And then we added all the dogs into the top one. But for, to make it easier for you to, to, to fathom what we're doing, we've just cut the front of the garden in one piece, ten and a half, the length of our, ten and a half, the length of our block, two and a half. by two and a half. He's written it one and a half, which is wrong. So this is the front garden, but you're all welcome to cut this into smaller pieces and add dogs and stuff in here like we did with the previous block. We're just keeping it simple for this one to make it easy to, to, to put it together. Now we'll start the assembly of the block. So we're going to start with the door piece together with the piece of the house on top of the door, which will be the lintel in this case. So we're first going to stitch those two together, like so, and I use quarter inch seams just like for normal patchwork throughout the assembly of the little house blocks. And now we're going to press this to the dark side. 
seal the seam, press to the dark side. And now we're going to, to add the side sides of the walls on either side of the door. Okay, for some odd reason, this one has got a little bit of an overhang, overhang on either side, as you can see. That doesn't matter, I just make sure that it's equal on either side and off we go. It will still work out in the end. So this is down the one side of our block. And we're going to repeat the exercise on the opposite side for our side walls next to our door frame or well, this is sort of the door frame again now pressing both of those to the dark side so first that side open turn it over that side Flip it back, and then we've got our door together with the side walls on the door. This unit now needs to be squared to four and a half by four and a half to make sure that it's going to fit in with all the rest of what we are doing. To make our unit perfect. There we go. So what we're now going to do is to build the side wall of the house. So we need the window piece, the top and bottom of that, and the two side walls. And we're going to first assemble this and then add those. Same way like we did with the door. So first along comes the top, quarter inch seam again. below the window and if you wanted to insert in this case on your window a piece of net curtaining this you would have done cut to the size of your block or slightly smaller depending on, on the style that you would like it to be and you would have sandwiched it into the top here and on the sides when you add the two side walls for this one we're not going to do a window i've got another plan to applique a little kid sitting in the side of the window when this is all done looking out of the window first we now need to press this open to the dark side again there's that one seal the seam press back so there's our side wall top and bottom now we're going to add the sides like i say if there was a net curtain it would have gone into that seam and into these two seams on the sides when you attach this like we did for the previous house in this case, again, I'm leaving a little bit either side. If it's because that means my seam allowance is smaller than the actual size of the block. This is why we also square these up as we go to help with the accuracy of the block. So there's the one side done. Blood scissors. And we're going to the opposite side. This one fits better. Oops. Ah, come on. There we are. So there's our unit, and now we need to press the walls to the sides. First, that one, seal the seal the seam. The side seal the seam open and our side wall is done apart from the tail over here so this one is also now going to be squared up same story as with the previous block we're now squaring this to four and a half by four and a half to make everything fit nicely together turn around and do the other two sides
and we're ready to carry on from here. Okay, so what we have now is a four and a half inch square with a door in it, and a four and a half inch square with our window in it, and we're now going to sew those together to create all the walls of our house as one big unit. So we put this on top of each other, <coughs> it will fit nicely because it's been squared up. Quarter inch seam, off we go. Seal the seam, press it to the dark side, and there is our house. Is our house complete? Front door and window all in one. Next, we are now going to do the roof together with the chimneys and the sky part of the design. So the first line we need is the three roof pieces with the two chimneys in between. And for the second row, we're going to need the, roof, the main roof piece together with two half, half square triangles, or rather they're just two, two half squares. That's going to be covered corners on the edges of the rectangle here. The other bit of the gable and the sky piece over there. So let's put them together. We'll start off with the top row. And I had a boo boo with this prior, which we would rather not show you. Little meltdown. Let's just carry on. And I'm going to do the chain piece fashion. There's the first two. There's the other two. Going to take them all out. And now I'm going to add this to this looks like the wrong side. There we go. We'll add this to the one side of this. this to the other side and because these seams are not going to match up really with anything else apart from the sides of the roof I will show you about the pressing now so that's our first line done and to press it like I say because it's not going to, to have to really go with anything else I'm turning it over this way, I'm starting on the one side, and I'm pressing all the lines to, to the one side, turning it back on to the right side, making sure that everything lies flat. So there is our chimneys together with the sky pieces. For this we're going to start off with the two side pieces. And here you have to take notice of the way in which your diagonal runs. So for this, in, for this instance, what I do, if, if I'm not sure, I turn it back so that I can see. And I can see that this is the right angle because my gable is also going to go that way. So this is the piece of sky that's going to look out behind my window, up by, by my roof. And that's what I want to see. So I know the angle of this is correct. So I'm making sure that this corner aligns. And then I'm going to sew slightly one hair's breadth on the left on the right hand side and the outside, so to speak, of our triangle piece. Can you see I keep I keep the line on the left? There's the opening, there's my needle in the middle of this. I keep this line on the edge of the left hand side. Then I know I'm a hair's breadth inside the seam allowance which just makes it, gives it a little bit of extra fabric so that it's easier to, when it's, when it's being pressed over, it just, as you can see, it runs slightly, slightly off of the, off of the peg mark there. 
And now this side, we need to do exactly the same because it's our gable, the first of our two gables running that away. Okay. So same story again. Line up the corner on the inside that we are going to cut away. And then we are going to do a hair's breadth, a very scant, just on the outside of that. Inside the hidden seam allowance, we're going to sew down this edge. This one is closer than the opposite one, it really doesn't matter. But can you see you, it's next to, not on top of your pen line. Now we're going to cut away, I think it's going to be easier and quicker with the, with the blade. We cut away a quarter inch and I just sort of... This I'm keeping. Other people throw it away. Hello Penny, this we keep. Right, now we do exactly the same on the opposite end. And we're now going to press it. This we keep. That's just preaching to Penny. To that side, make sure that's flat. The opposite side, as you can see, we've used a friction pen. God is the pen, the pen marks. So there's our gable. It should be sitting like that. There's the gable of our roof. There's the side of our roof. And there's the bit of sky. I just need to turn it to iron it flat. Let's go back here. There's the side of the sky that peaks out this side. And now if we bring this, you can see that our sky fits together. That should be over the roof here. That should be sits. Now we need to attach this as a gable. So we need to make another half square triangle of this one and this one together. So it doesn't matter, we just put them on top of each other. Do the odd scan thing again, like we did prior to now, on the other two. There we are. You can see that there is, we're next to the pen mark again. So I had that flat. I add this over. There's a reason why I didn't cut this down before the time. I can tell you in previous years that I've normally kept this all together. Some people take out the one in the center and leave the inside and outside. Other people take off both, which I do too now. I find that this is too much bulk especially when you start quilting over the lot of it. So, put that down and take off about a quarter inch. You can use a ruler for this. Again, this I save for the smaller blocks later. And there we have it. And I've just gone and done it the wrong way around. Oh, I didn't. There we are. So there's our gable. Now we're going to attach these two together. To finish off our gable, you can, in this instance, I've, so I've, I've pressed it both to the, to the one side, but you can press to the opposite end so that these seams butt together, which will give you, I can, I'm just going to flip it like I do now, and sew it, and then just press it flat. It makes it just easier for you to make sure that you've got a sharp point at the top of our gable over here. So there we go, sell it down, sorry for the noise of the trucks passing, we have in the, in the shop again doing this. Before I press it open, I'm first going to press that to the opposite end, there it's lying flat. Now we can open this after we've sealed the edge, open the gable. And I quickly just want to address this situation as well. We had Chanel's ask us about the points that being in the wrong place. Look what happened here. As I created this, there's a quarter inch seam. But when we add this to that, it's going to end up making a perfect point for you there. So it needs to look like that 
or like hers did this morning. It was the right way around. So there's our roof and there's our two, two chimneys. And you can see I hardly ever use pins. But in this instance, to get this exactly there and this exactly there, I am going to pin them down. To make sure that I've got... And I will turn this over so that I can see... My two seams are on opposite ends and they will butt together nicely there. And I'm going to pin this. And on the opposite side, there's not a pin here, but what I can do, little, little hint for you, measure a quarter, quarter inch in, which is approximately somewhere over here and press this pin straight down and see if it comes can you see it's next to my line there so i want to move this fabric a scant a scant bit over to the inside and if i now go there by the quarter inch i'm now on the outside i've done it too much so i'm going to move it back backwards again a little bit and this should now do, there we are. It's doing what I want it to do. It should be sitting in the right place. If not, I'm not going to be too worried about it. Because this is all about fun little houses. Now, can you see that this one seems as if it's bigger than the outside, the back one there? I'm just going to slightly pull this when I sew it so that it all lies flat. So there we go, and now we're going to just quickly sew this together so that our roof and our chimneys become one. Quarter inch seam allowance again. Line the pins as you go. I drive until I get to the front of my pin and then take it out. I drive until I get to the front of my pin and then take it out. And then make sure that everything else is aligned. And then I slightly pull it so that I can have everything flat. Drive up and close to the pin. Pull out the pin and go to the end of the line. This seam doesn't matter if it's, if it's uh, pressed up or down. What I do is I open it and I see where it wants to go. You can immediately see here, the seam wants to go up. So this is what we're going to do. Just seal the edges and then press it open. And as I can bring it closer so that you can have a look. Our chimney is sitting right where it should be, and our chimney is sitting there on the edge of our corner there. So this is the chimneys together with our roof. We are now ready for the next step. So the, we've made the layout for the next two steps. The first step will be to finish this, the, the, the roof with the skies. And there will be one more sky piece coming, to, but that we'll do right at the end. So we're first now going to take our roof piece and attach on both sides a piece of sky. Then we're going to take our house piece and on either side what we call the side gardens running up along the sides of the roof and what we've done is we've got this butterfly on this end and we've got the dragonflies on the other side flying so we'll just call this the insect house so let's start with this a bit of sky on either side of the roof quarter inch seam allowance again Nothing strange. I'm again doing it um, factory style, so I'm taking the house with a one side garden, adding that on here. Then I'm taking my roof and the other's opposite side of the sky here, adding that on. To this end, right. 
right and we're taking our house block and we're taking the opposite side of our side guard on the other side and we're going to attach that to the opposite side of our house then we can press the whole lot and finish off the block back to the pressing station first off we take the sky and the roof seal the seam press it over other side seal the seam press it over just give it a good flat press house block seal the seam press it over other side seal the seam press it over now what we're going to do where we've got our house block we've got our roof block and we're going to attach these two together Back to the pressing station. I just want to cut off the excess here. There we are. Seal the seam and press the whole lot open. And there we are that's our house block that far so this is the first block that we've made exactly the same pattern and this you can see is already designated for Hudley it's going to become Sir Toby's house I'm still going to do a bit of it because there sits Sir Toby what we've done with this front garden we're going to do the same on this and the new block by attaching the extra piece of sky but what we did with Sir Toby's block is we made the front garden into two parts with a lot of little one-inch one blocks in between to do little hairs in the garden with flowers and then there's Toby and Toby's got a friend and then we did the pebble garden in the right in the front of it. What we're doing with the second block because I've got other plans for this block's detail is we've made the front of the garden just one big piece uh, that looks like grass. It's a bit of a tick that I, a piece of off cut that I got from Penny. And um, so the blue grass is going to be in the front of the blue house. And then on here and in the window, I'm going to do some appliques later. And then there is the one piece for the sky. So to get this to a 10 and a half by 10 and a half, we now need to attach the front garden to the house and then the sky to the house. So let's quickly do that. But like I say, you can at any point in time, even with the sky, cut them up into one and a half inch blocks and then do birds flying around, etc, etc. There is really no right or wrong with this. Anything, anything happens. So there's our roof assembled with the sky on top. Let's quickly give it a press. By the way, I'm still playing with the little bits of scraps that Penny sent me. Bags full, not little bits. It was lots of little bits, lots and lots. And this is why we are still playing with those scraps. So there we've got our sky on our, on our house and now we need to put the front garden in the front here. 